Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and isn't it amazing how like very similar things always seem to happen at the same time? Now earlier this week, I did a video about what I thought was a kind of unique thing, in that Ubisoft was releasing in conjunction with uh, Knowledge One and Concordia University an online curriculum for game design. This is actually a program, a gamified version of how to learn game design that they're selling to universities. Now the majority of you, that is absolutely useless because unless you are enrolled in one of these universities, you do not have access to this game, this curriculum, and this learning material. However, another game designer did the exact same thing slash the opposite thing, I guess, is how we will put it. And that is Riot Games, the makers of um, League of Legends and nothing else as far as I know, actually. Um, they have released ERF. Um, so this is the week of fun acronyms. Earlier on, we had the Universal Render Pipeline, or ERP. Uh, here we have ERF. Um, this is a free resource for educators who seek to encourage and inspire the next generation of game designers. Now, the last one we talked about, the Ubisoft Game Creator Odyssey, was aimed at university level. This is actually more aimed at um, high school level teachers for students. So, our game design curriculum is our way to share our love for and knowledge of games to students everywhere. We designed it with accessibility top of mind. Any teacher with access to the internet and a printer should be able to teach students how to design a fun game. That also means that you yourself could just jump in and go through this course. You don't need to be enrolled in anything. It's not something that uh, Riot Games are trying to sell. This is just something that they altruistically put together. Um, it's a six module curriculum. We outline the principles of game design using a simple framework and explore concepts through engaging workshops and activities. Students will learn about the language and theory necessary to engage deeply with games and ultimately collaborate in groups to design a paper prototype of a multiplayer game. Now that's one thing to keep in mind with both the GCO and Earth, <coughs> excuse me, that makes me cough, is these are design-focused courses. You are not learning how to code, you are not learning how to make models or how to use any tools. These are how to design difficult and or fun games um, using the methodology used internally at Ubisoft, or in this case, Riot Games. Now this one, you can just go ahead and check up. Just go here. Uh, I will obviously link this in the article down below. Uh, and the curriculum is there. You go in here, you see the curriculum guide, an overview of the Earth online curriculum. It contains a teacher's overview, additional context, and a glossary of terms. So even if you're reading this yourself, do keep in mind that the actual target audience here is a teacher. This is more courseware to teach someone game design, but there's no reason why you can't be your own teacher. Just keep that in mind. So it's broken into, again, all the different modules. So we have the curriculum guide, uh, module one on uh, game feeling and kinds of fun. Module two is goals and pacing. Module three is meaningful decisions and opposition. Module four is rules, thematics, and complexity. Uh, module five is interaction. Uh, module six is the final project. Now, if you actually start going through these, um, well, the first one's a little bit different because, of course, this is the curriculum guide. It is a 14-page um, manual basically explaining the entire process and then we get into the different modules these are lessons plans uh, so you see it's slides that are built right in um, instructions as you go through and then in some cases there is um, there's videos you can link to here so magic the gathering lessons learned video here that you go through and then there's questions there's tips on what to follow um, so yeah that's kind of basic the idea behind this, this is a, a, a chapter on uh, how to learn about game design. Now you're seeing there's a lot of link outs to uh, other materials and resources as we go through it. And then you get into the next one and it kind of continues along the same vein. So you see it's embedded uh, resources with links out to um, external concepts. And the entire idea here is to teach you you know, what makes games fun, what makes games challenging. And then of course, again, this is aimed at teachers, so there are homework style assignments. But truth of the matter is, nothing beats developing muscle memory in any way, shape, or form. So there is nothing wrong with you doing the home assign work. You just are gonna have trouble evaluating it. Um, but yeah, that's the basic idea behind it. It goes on and on. It's just, again, six modules uh, between, you know, 10 and 20 pages of content a piece with a number of linked out videos. Uh, it's definitely some interesting stuff. If game design is your thing, um, there aren't a lot of really great materials out there. So this is a good crash course. It's, it's If you just even want to spend a, a, like a half an hour going through all this, if you're into game design, I'm sure you'll glean some relevant stuff here to make it worth your half an hour of your life. And it keeps going. Oh, I should have pointed that out. There's also some student material downloads available. Um, and so on. So as we go through it, and then the last one, student material once again, and then the final one, final project here, 
Uh, oh, I thought there was a download there as well. But here you kind of you're putting it all together to design a game again on paper, not in reality. Kind of putting together everything that you have learned. And this one is actually 32 pages long in this particular case. So you're probably looking at a small book here, probably about 120 to 150 pages worth of content, plus the linked videos, plus the um, you know the downloads that go along with it. It's a neat project for sure. Now you can see the Earth Academy Online Game Design Curriculum is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. That basically means uh, attribution, so if you use it you, uh, in some way or derive from it, you need to give them credit. Uh, Non-commercial means you basically can't sell it. Do be sure to check out more details. If you want to learn more about the license, you can see here, so you are free to share, copy, distribute material, adapt, remix, and build upon the material. Uh, under the following terms. So if you do make changes, you have to give credit to um, Riot Games. Uh, Non-commercial, you may not use this material for commercial purposes. And share alike, if you remix, transform, or build upon this, you must uh, also distribute your content. So that is the, the limitations of the particular license it's under. So as long as you're not trying to make money from it. Uh, so actually, it's kind of interesting. A school could use this, and a high school could use this, but a for-profit school... I don't know if they can because of that license. If you're legal-minded, I'd be curious to know. If you think that the uh, um, the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share like 4.0 International License, can that be used in a commercial educational, like something like a DeVry, where students are paying for that education uh, and it's a for-profit setting? I wonder if you could actually go ahead and use this. I don't ultimately care. It's more of a question of curiosity, to be honest. But that is it. That is the earth from... Um, Riot Games, interesting to see. I don't actually know a lot about Riot Games, to be honest, but I do got to say one thing. They've got this picture here, and they've obviously given away shirts. And it's weird to see a room full of people with the same shirt, with the same catchphrase on the back. It's actually kind of creepy, like a Stepford Wives thing. Or maybe I'm just weird. Now, as a bit of bonus content, another interesting thing that came out of Riot Games is from their blog. This was released a couple days back, so September 24th, so four days ago. They did an update on where they're going with League of Legends. And, you know, there's not a whole lot here, but they kind of talk about an interesting concept of um, heavy versus light game engines and where they're going to go with it. So you see here, where an engine draws a line between its high-performance core and the high-expression scripts dictate where its complexity is captured. You can go engine-heavy and have loads of complexity in the high-performance core, so basically in the heart of the engine itself, or you can have a light core and then you push the complexity out into the scripting. Now, the really weird thing is their example of heavy is Blueprint, which makes no sense to me whatsoever, because um, I, I would say that the core of Unreal Engine is is pretty damn robust. Uh, and so it kind of defies their, their conventions here at all. But here you see, basically, they talk about the merits of the two approaches. League of Legends using uh, a light engine core, so basically put all of the functionality, or put more of the functionality, roll it down into the, the scripting side of things. Very similar to, say, what something like Neverwinter Nights uses heavily. And the approach they would take using a high-level language, such as C Sharp or Python. Or you're going the engine-heavy approach, where you just add more more and more functionality on the C++ side of things in the core um, makes it harder to, you know, go to a, uh, you can't offload as much to a designer. You need to have more technical staff, um, more dependencies on that centralized core. I think on all honesty, they don't do an accurate job of defining the negative traits of engine heavy, which is kind of ironic because ultimately they are choosing um, to go the engine heavy way, I believe is what they decided here. So it says right here, uh, they're not going to say exactly what they're doing, but they are leading towards the uh, engine heavy. The movement towards engine heavy and explicitly away from engine light will provide us with more secure footing for increasing the complexity of League of Legends. I think this is actually a, a mistake, personally, um, but it, it, at least this is their per personal opinion and take on the subject. Um, some of the comments actually, I think, correspond with my agreement, but it is cool to see, uh, you know, internal game design type tech like terminology and talking and design ideas from a, a company like this you don't often see into their insights whether you agree with it or not um, so it, it is an interesting read like i said i don't necessarily agree with their conclusions uh, and i definitely do not agree that um 
uh, blueprints or Unreal are an extreme uh, heavy uh, engine heavy example that just makes no sense to me, to be honest. Or it might have been just a bad choice in graphics there, but. Uh, yeah, that is another little bonus piece that is here. It's, it's kind of an interesting read, and it's an interesting conversation. Where do you fall on that spectrum? If you were designing a game engine right now, would you make it so that the core is just super capable and then have like a really simple streamlined scripting language on top of it? Or would you make the core really robust and adaptable but designed so that the extensibility and so on is implemented in the scripting layer. I'm definitely more towards the light side of that, although I think the honest reality of the world today is that there aren't th this, these polars that they're going towards are a mistake. And the reality is most game engines like um, Unreal or Unity or CryEngine or even Lumberyard um, or Godot, like a lot of the game that you're seeing today are actually right in the middle ground where they have a strong and robust core, but they've also got a strong general purpose and abstractable script layer on top of it so that if you choose to build your game using one of these engines to go one way, you can, or you can go the other way if you want. So I don't, I think they're kind of making a decision that doesn't need to be made. But anyways, I'd love to hear you read this article. Give me what your opinion of their takeaway is and tell me, do you think that they should be moving towards the extremes or do you think they should be sticking in the middle like I think they should? Anyways, it's an interesting bonus add-in to the conversation and uh, yeah, let me know what you think of both things in general. First off, they've got this new curriculum. Earth does, uh, you know, it's not really for me per se, but if you're looking for design or you're teaching kids it's a great resource, and uh, you know, unlike what Ubisoft is doing, it is you can you can just go ahead and download it and use it. So that's definitely nice. Nice to see Riot Games doing that. And then again, there's this engine design question. I've already covered it. I'm curious to hear what your opinion is either way. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.